an updated video on how to hyperlapse on the DJI Mavic Air. Yep, what you just saw there was DJI Mavic Air footage. It wasn't the Mavic 2, it wasn't the Phantom 4 Pro, it was the DJI Mavic Air. About a year ago, I made a video on how to hyperlapse on a drone. In this video, this is gonna be more of an updated version of my process for doing that. I've had a chance over the last year since I've shot that video to go out and shoot a lot of hyperlapses and I've learned a lot of new things and I want to give you an updated version of what I already talked about in that video um, but I want to add a few things in there. So before I get into showing you how to do anything on your drone, I want to go over a few tips on how to get good hyperlapses. So my first tip is to get as close as possible to the shot that you want to get before you launch the drone. If you start your hyperlapse at 90%, in the end you're going to get about 3-5 to five seconds worth of video from that. Tip number two, when your battery gets anywhere from 40 to 35%, I would stop the hyperlapse and fly your drone back immediately because when you do your hyperlapse, your drone is going to travel really far. Even if you're going at the lowest speed possible and tap fly, it's going to travel very far away. Tip number three, make sure that you don't fly in windy conditions. So you'll notice with some of those clips you saw at the beginning, the camera was a little shaky. So the scenes that you see in Goblin Valley there, that was an extremely windy day. Your drone has a hard time locking onto a target and remaining stable during a very slow flight. And so you wanna make sure when you do fly it, you don't do it in windy conditions. So if I compare that shot to the one I did in an American Fort Canyon, for example, you'll notice how the shot was a lot smoother. There was no wind at all on that day. Tip number four, make sure you choose an interesting composition. And when I say an interesting composition, you have to think in terms of a time lapse. You're going to be seeing time go by, and so in your image, you want to be able to show that in some way. And if you look at this shot here, you can see how the clouds are dancing light across this farmland here. And so that gives us an illusion that time is passing by in a really fast manner. Tip number five, make sure that you shoot in RAW and you don't shoot in JPEG or video. The reason why is because when you shoot in RAW, that unlocks a lot of features for you to do in post-production. So what I can do is I can really boost those colors because I shot in RAW. It also gives you a lot more minute detail because it's, it's shot in a higher bit depth than JPEG or when you shoot video. What I want to do now is just briefly go over how to get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to make sure that your camera settings are set to the right setting. So I'm gonna come over to my settings here and I'm gonna make sure that my camera is set to JPEGs and RAW. So the reason why you wanna do that is because if you upload the JPEGs to your phone, you can do a quick preview of it and see how the hyperlapse turned out. Um, it just really integrates with your phone really well, but when you put it into your editing software, you're gonna use the RAW files. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to your, your shooting settings and what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to time shoot and you're gonna set the interval to five seconds. Okay, so now what you'll do is you'll find your composition. So you'll walk out as close as you can to whatever your, your subject is and you're going to launch your drone into the air. And once you find your target, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on your intelligent flight modes and you're gonna click on tap fly. And then what you'll do is you'll click on forward. And once you click on forward, you're gonna pick a point uh, somewhere in the background, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and click go once you find that point. And you're gonna make sure that your speed is set to 2.2 miles per hour. And then once you click go, you're gonna start your interval. Okay, so you'll keep that going for a while. And then once your battery gets down to 40 to 35%, then you're going to stop the time lapse and you're going to return home. Okay, so over this past year, I use Adobe still for a lot of stuff, um, but I've started to use DaVinci Resolve. And the reason being is because DaVinci Resolve is really smooth with its editing and I have very little crashes compared to Premiere. Now I use a full version license of DaVinci Resolve in order to do the stabilization. If you're interested in that, you can click on the link down below in the description. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click where it says no clips in media pool. And I'm gonna scroll down and go to import media. Okay, and then I'm going to go down to my time lapse here. As you can see, I have quite a few in here. So I'll click on this one here. And then I'll click on this one. And I'm gonna hold the shift key when I click on this last one here. And what that does is that'll select all of my image sequences here. And then I will click open. And so the nice thing that DaVinci Resolve does is when I click on those sequences, it automatically recognizes those sequences as a video file. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the clip and I'm gonna go to clip attributes. And then I wanna make sure that it's set to the correct frame rate. Um, I have it set to 24. Uh, you can set it to 30 frames a second if you want to, but I'm just going to keep mine at 24, and then we'll click OK. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clip here and drag it down to my timeline, and as you can see, it'll create a new timeline here. All right, so let's go ahead and play through this and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's not too bad, actually. So we can see here that it's still, it's still a little shaky going into it, but not by a lot. Okay, so what we'll do next is we'll come down to color here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over to tracker and I'll click on tracker and then I'll come over to window and then I'll go ahead and click on Stabilizer. And then I'll click Stabilize. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and press the space bar. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, you can kind of see at the end there it gets a little wobbly. So sometimes at the tail end of these hyperlapses, uh, they do get a little wobbly sometimes. So I'm just gonna do a simple solution for that. And I'm gonna come back over to edit here. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to cut off that tail end where it gets kind of wobbly. It's like about right here. So I'll just, so I'm just gonna select the edge of this clip here, hold down my mouse button and then slide it back. Okay, now let's play it. Okay, now that looks butter smooth to me. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we want to color correct this clip. So I'm gonna click back on the color again. And then you'll see here how there are these, there's these different color wheels. Now, I'm not gonna teach you how to do a deep color correction in this tutorial. Um, there's a lot of color correction settings in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, what I'm gonna simply gonna do is just show you some things that I do on my end to really bring out some of those colors. So I'm gonna come down here to saturation and I'm going to hold down my mouse button and then we'll boost the saturation. And as you can see here, it's really bringing out the red on those red rocks there. And then, yeah, I'll play around with these color wheels a little bit. So I'll go over to this gamma color wheel here and I can move that around a little bit. So I'll move it more into the blues. And again, it'll depend on what your personal preference is here, but that's the way I like it. And then if I wanna to go to some more color wheels, you see these little dots up here, I can click on these. So I'll go over to this far one here. And then, let's see, I'll turn my highlights down to, to a blue there. And I'll turn my mid-tones Turn my midtones up a little bit into the magenta. And then turn my shadows down into the greens just a little bit. Okay, so that's essentially what it looks like. And then if I make it full screen, so if I press Control F, then I can play it. Okay, so that's looking pretty snazzy. Okay, so there you have it. An updated video on how to hyperlapse on the DJI Mavic Air in 2019. 
Be sure to like and subscribe and also click the bell button if you're interested in seeing more videos from me. Also, if you wanna learn more about the DJI Mavic Air, there's a link down below to DJI's website that you can click on.